all right uh, so in order to understand the concept of speed and velocity now uh, you need to know what distance and displacement mean and how they are different from each other so in order to understand that i would suggest you watch the previous video and then come back to this because those are the two quantities that we'll be using to explain these two further so we're going to start by looking at uh, the old example that we looked at before so blue arrows are showing the distance distances that you traveled the path that you took to go from town a to town b and the 95 meter uh, is basically the displacement between town a and b and let's understand how are we going to calculate the speed here so speed is basically just how fast you are traveling and in order to understand um, and under, understand that word the speed let's actually assign some time values to the distances so let's say you covered the first 50 meters in 5 seconds let's say you covered the next 70 meters in 6 seconds and you covered the next 40 meters in 3 seconds so we can basically calculate individual speeds for each of the distances here speed is very easily calculated i'm sure we all know the formula for that it's just distance over time distance over time so speed one uh, for the first 50 meters would be 50 over 5 and that would be 10 meters per second so why am I choosing that unit well because the unit of distance is meters this is in meters and this is given in seconds so automatically the unit of speed becomes meters per second speed for the second part of the journey let's call the speed 2 that would be 70 divided by 6 so we can find that out 70 divided by 6 gives us 11.7 meters per second and then similarly we can find speed 3 which is going to be 40 over 3 and that would be <clears throat> 13 point 3 meters per second now what would be the average speed for the whole journey uh, well let's just first define the speed here and then we can actually explain ourselves what is the average speed going to be so let's define speed first the definition is going to be distance covered per unit time so what that means is whatever the unit unit of time that you are using it could be seconds it could be hours it could be minutes how much distance you have covered in that unit of time so for this case uh, we are looking at three different speeds what you are actually saying here is that in one second you are covering a distance of 10 meters and for the next part of the journey when one second passes you are actually covering a distance of 11.7 meters and similarly for the last one in one second you are covering a distance of 13.3 meters so it's basically telling you how fast you are going by saying that if one unit of time passes how far you have actually traveled so that is you can actually make a formula for it which is pretty simple formula is we have just used it its distance or let's say speed is equals to distance over time in symbols we can write it as you can also write it as d over t you can represent the distance with s or with t it's really your choice uh, it could also be x here um, now what are the units of speed well the si unit 
will be meters per second but it could also be kilometers per hour or other units depending on whatever units you have available for distance and whatever units you have available for time you decide the unit of speed uh, now it is also important to understand that <coughs> speed is a scalar quantity speed is actually a scalar so we know already from last lecture that scalars actually have just have magnitude they don't have direction so when you're trying telling the speed of the object you're just saying how fast it's going how much distance is covered in one second you're not saying in which direction the distance is covered now let's try and understand what would be the velocity of the journey we have three different speeds and these are actually average speeds of different parts of the journey for the whole journey we can calculate the velocity as well and that would be simply change of displacement or how much how far you have come no matter what is the path that you have taken over time so when you went from town a to town b when you went from town a to town b you went 95 meters that was your displacement and the time it took you was 5 plus 6 plus 3 that's the total time it took you your average velocity for this journey is going to be 95 divided by 5 plus 6 plus 3 and that is going to be 6.7 meters per second but with velocity it's not just enough just like with displacement in velocity as well it's not just enough to give the magnitude because velocity is a vector quantity so you have to also say which direction you are traveling in well uh, assuming that our white line is entirely straight and this is north we can say that town b is due east of town a so with our velocity we can give the direction due east 6.7 meters per second but also the direction traveled for uh, the whole journey now then let's also define velocity understand the formula that we are going to use for it and its units so how do you define velocity well there are a couple of different definitions you can write but it's really up to you so you can also write it as rate of change of displacement but that also is the same as change in displacement per unit time there is another way to define it and you can say it's speed with direction and that's what velocity essentially is it is speed basically it tells you how fast you are going but it also tells you in which direction you are going so it's speed with direction what formula are we going to use for velocity well we just used it to solve the example below it's going to be velocity equals change in displacement divided by time remember whenever you have a rate of change of any quantity you just have a, a, the change of that quantity in the numerator and in the denominator you always divide by time so velocity is rate of change of displacement what are the units again they are the same as speed so the SI unit is going to be meters per second but you can also use kilometers per hour or but it's going to be according to what unit of time and distances are available and just like displacement because it is calculated from displacement velocity is not a scalar but a vector quantity and that means it has both direction and magnitude that is why with the answer in the following example 
we gave the direction with the magnitude as well. Now, in order to calculate the speed or the velocity for the whole journey, we need to understand the concept between these two words, instantaneous and average. And both speeds and velocity can be instantaneous or average. So the question I, would, I want to pose in front of you is when you look at the speedometer of the car, let's say it's 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. When you look at the speedometer of the car and the needle is pointing here, let's say it says 50 meters per second here or 50 kilometers per hour. What is it actually telling you? Is it giving you the instantaneous speed or is it giving you the average speed of the car well it's actually giving you the instantaneous speed it's basically telling you how fast the car is going right now when you are looking at the speedometer and that as you know this thing keeps changing if you slow down the car the needle is gonna go this way and if you speed up the car it's gonna go that way so the speed at a particular moment keeps changing but for the whole journey you can always calculate the average speed in fact the formulas that we have given above are actually calculating the average speed for the whole journey so how do you calculate the average speed or average velocity its total distance of the whole journey divided by total time for the journey and similarly for velocity average velocity is going to be the same thing total displacement over total time for the journey and unless the speed uh, something travels at exactly a constant speed and its speed never changes the average speed and instantaneous speed are always going to be two different pieces of information. So let's do a couple of examples or one example to understand how do you calculate the average speed. Well, first look at our uh, town A and B example first. How, what is the average speed for this whole journey from town A to town B? Well, it is total distance over total time so you remember the total distance would be 50 meters 70 meters and 40 meters so that is the total distance covered so that will be 50 plus 70 plus 40 and the total time which was 5 seconds 6 seconds and 3 seconds 5 seconds 6 seconds plus 3 seconds so that is 160 meters divided by 5 plus 6 which is 11 and 11 plus 3 is 14 so what is the average speed that we get? 160 divided by 14 gives us 11.4 meters per second. That is the average speed for the whole journey. And this one, because there was only one velocity uh, between the two points, uh, there was only one displacement between the two points so that is the velo that is actually the average velocity between the two towns for the whole journey now then let's do an example to understand the concept of these two things here is the example well figure 2.4 shows a car that travels 5 kilometers due east takes a u-turn and then travels another 7 kilometers in the opposite direction Time for the whole journey is 0 0.2 hours. Calculate the average speed and the average velocity. So how do you calculate the average speed in this example? Well, as we remember, it is total distance over total time. And you can see that the total distance covered by the path is just its total path taken. So it's 7 and 5. So that will be 5 plus 7 over 0 0.2 hours. And that gives us 12 over 0 0.2, which is 60 meters per second. Since this is the average speed, I don't need to give any 
uh, direction with us since it's a scalar. Now let's do velocity. How do you calculate average velocity for the whole journey? First of all, we need to understand what is the total displacement of this car, right? So in order to do that, let's look at where the car is at the end of the journey. Well, at the end of the journey, the car is at this point and the car started the journey at point A, point O. So what is the distance between those two? Well, from the diagram, it's pretty clear that the car went basically two kilometers uh, back from point O at the end of the whole journey. So it's going to be 7 minus 5, which is going to be 2 kilometers upon. <clears throat> or what we actually need to do is, let's also include signs here. So we need to also understand what is meant by negative and positive uh, signs when it comes to speed and velocity. So you see the car, let's assign a positive direction to this whole example first. Let's take positive as the right direction. Right is positive. So when the car goes 5 kilometers ahead, we're going to take it as a positive displacement. When the car comes back 7 kilometers, we're going to say it's minus 7. So the displacement is actually going to be minus 2 kilometers. The time taken was 0 0.2 hours. That would be minus 10 meters per second. What is the minus sign actually telling me? The minus sign is actually telling me that the car overall traveled in the opposite direction of what we assumed to be positive. We assumed right to be positive, but the car has actually ended up to the left of the starting point. So this thing is actually giving me a hint about the direction in which the car has traveled, right? So. There are two ways to answer this question. Either we can just leave this as minus 10 and that could be the answer. Or we can say 10 kilometers per hour. Let me just correct the unit here. It will be kilometers per hour. 10 kilometers per hour due west since upwards was north. So the car is actually traveled towards west so there are two ways of answering this question either can give the sign with 10 and that basically indicates that the car has traveled in the opposite direction or I can write down the direction separately and in the problems that we are going to solve for past papers it always is going to depend on the question of how they require the answer to be but usually with velocity at O, uh, at o levels we usually give the direction as a separate uh, information and it is not mostly required to include the sign in the answer. Alright then.